Hello class, Math Ninja here. So, I I think I'm gonna leave isomorphism, homomorphisms later. For now, I want to jump straight into an application from number theory. Because you kids, number theory, you're just taking it from me. So, fresh in your mind. And what's a good application of number theory? Or what's a good, ex what we learned from number theory is, um, from Maslow theorem and Euler's theorem. Proof of that very simple with groups. So, and you already see a proof of that on my YouTube with my other current kids. But I want to show you the proof using Lagrange's theorem. So today the topic will be partitions, partitions, equivalence relations, and Lagrange's theorem. Next week we'll go into homomorphism and isomorphisms. Next week. Okay, so first question, what is a partition? Partition, very simple. It means I can break up a world, a universe, uh, into the union of some union of sets S, I, uh, I in some indexing set, such that S, I and S, J intersection of F, I, S, J is not empty, for I does not equal J. And, or wait, equals empty, I'm sorry. Equal empty, and SI is not is non empty. So, I can, so, okay, let's put this in layman terms now. That means I can take a universe, a universe of objects, objects such as kittens or pandas, bunch of objects, kittens and pandas. And I can say, okay. This is, if this is the entire space of kittens and pandas, then I can break it up into parts. Each part being two things. Or each part being non-empty. So each one contains at least one. Each part non-overlapping. This part does not overlap with this part, or this part, or this part. And lastly, the union of all of them is the entire universe. So let me give you another example. Okay, in the land of, okay, a phoenix, we have a hundred phoenixes. We can partition this into two type of phoenixes. In the world of Philip, there's only, I mean, the world of Math Ninja, there's only two type of phoenixes. Red phoenix, blue phoenix. So I split all the phoenixes into reds and blues. So there's 98 red two blue. We put them in two different groups. <sighs> group theory isn't using the word group. We put them in two different sets. Another example. Look at the equivalence classes, right? Look at all the integers. I can break them up. When you take one modulo three, one mod, mod three, it's one. Two mod three is two. Three mod three, is zero. Four mod three is one. So I can break this up in positive integers into three different sets. So this will be every, everything. In fact, even better, odds and evens. I can break up all the positive integers as odd or even. So one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, two, four, six, eight. And then union will be all, all positive integers. So, okay. Now, I want a way to build partition rigorously. One way we can do it is with something called an equivalence relation. So what is equivalence relation? We think abstractly and I say A related to B. I say A is related to B. An object A has a relation with B. A special relation I call R. For example, a relation can be is bigger than. Well, no, that's ordering. Well, oh, okay. A is the same bloodline of B. Philip has the same blood as Jim because they are in the same family tree. So let me give you an example. So therefore, let me give you some definition. So we say A is related to B.
under a relation R? If three things hold. So all relation is, it says for related is really falls under some set, but I don't want to make it very rigorous. But you can understand very easily. Just read the book, but I will make it. I'll just write definition. To say something's related to another something, it's, good. it's just definition of being in some set, and I don't want to do that. I want you to understand concept first, and then the nitty gritty of definition you understand. So just have three properties. One, for any A, A or A. Oh, by the way, we say A is related to B. Oh, okay. I undo this. Okay, sorry. We start off. All right, let's, let's, let's do the nitty gritty. We say A, so we have a relation A R B is equal to, we say this is true if we define a relation as a set, as a set of pairs on some universe. So it will be a set of pairs, for example, A, B, C, D, and so forth. All relation is, is a set of pairs. And we say A is related to B if it's in the set R. You say A is related to B if it's in R. A related to B. Okay, so it's an equivalence relation if three properties hold. The first property we want is called. Uh, is called um, uh, reflexivity. So for any A, A is related to itself. So that means, okay, relation, an example of relation, we can give this a, a um, actual meaning. In one example, for example, we can say, uh, um, rhyming, okay. Look at the set of all words. One word is uh, John. Wait, that's a bad word, John. Okay, Philip. <laughs> Philip is a word in our language. Philip rhymes with Philip. So Philip rhymes with Philip itself. Philip doesn't rhyme with Jim, but Philip rhymes with Philip. It's a bad rhyme, but this is a rhyme still. <laughs> so if we have the relation R, be the relation of the set of all pairs that rhyme. For example, Philip rhymes with Philip will be in the set. Uh, Killip rhymes with Trillip. Um, I make up words, but you understand. And we have finally many words. Not in my example, but in real life. <laughs> okay, two. We have something called symmetry. For any A comma B, if A related to B, then B related to A. So on our example, Jim rhymes with Tim. But because Jim rhymes with Tim, Tim then rhymes with Jim. Has to have symmetry. That's what makes it, it you need that for a common solution. And lastly, uh, for any A, B, and C, If A related to B, B related to C, then A related to C. So in other words, if Jim is related to Tim, and Tim is related to Kim, then Jim is related to Kim. Jim rhymes with Tim, right? We know Tim rhymes with Kim. It's equivalence relation. If it's equivalence relation, Jim has to rhyme with Kim. Okay, this is 10 minutes. I'm gonna get a new, new, this is very bad. I'll get to another one. You gotta stop 10 minute mark. Thank you.